Hello, I'm High Heel Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire pitch meeting reaction. You might hear some noise in the background because there's construction, but what can you do? Three, two, one. So, you have that new Harry Potter movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Wow, so what's going on with the characters? Well, I'll tell you, sir, all the guy characters decided it's time to have long hair for a year. <laughs> oh, okay, that's kind of random. A little bit. Is that the only thing going on this year, or? Nope, there's more, actually. So Harry and Hermione and the Weasleys are gonna go to this thing called the Quidditch World Cup. Okay. And they're also going with Arthur Weasley's co-worker and his son, Cedric Diggory. How were we introduced to him? Just the normal way, you know, he suddenly drops out of a tree. That's not normal. Sure it is. <laughs> so they head to the World Cup and there are a ton of wizards there. Very cool. Wow, I can't wait to see what the Quidditch World Cup is like. Right? Sounds super cool, doesn't it? So then we're gonna cut to right after it's all done. Oh. And the event's gonna get attacked by some Death Eaters and Harry's gonna get knocked unconscious. Oh no. Yeah, and so later he wakes up and everything's been burned to the ground and he's the last one there. Not a single person saw him there and he wasn't affected by the fire or smoke. That's what we're going with. And then this Death Eater Barty Crouch Jr. shows up and shoots a dark mark into the sky. Oh, very ominous. Anyway, so eventually Harry goes back to Hogwarts and Dumbledore gives his annual speech about all the ways the kids might die this year. As is tradition, sure. <laughs> so what's going on this year? Well, this year Hogwarts has been chosen to host something called the Triwizard Tournament. And what's that? It's this big competition between three wizarding schools, so a bunch of people from these two other schools come in and do little dances for some reason. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So to have a chance at being chosen, you need to be at least 17 and you need to put your name in something called the Goblet of Fire, and only one wizard per school can be chosen. Okay. And once the three names are chosen, somehow there's a fourth name, and it's Harry Potter. Wait, so are the students from the other schools just gonna live at Hogwarts now? Yes. Even the ones that weren't <laughs> chosen? Yeah, they're all just gonna kinda live there for a year. That's kinda weird. No, it's not. So then Dumbledore <laughs> runs up to Harry and shakes him like crazy and says, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Oh, that doesn't really sound like Dumbledore. Isn't he more calm and collected? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'm profoundly angry angry inside all the time, so maybe I projected onto him a little bit. You should maybe see somebody about that. No! Alright, so anyway, this is a super dangerous tournament, and if you're chosen, you're magically bound to compete. What does that mean? You have to do it. Right, but what happens if you don't do it? I don't know, I guess you die or something, right? That seems to be the implication. Why would this be a thing? Well, sir, they really want to know which school has the best wizard child, so death's gotta be on the table here. Oh my god. So throughout the year, Harry's gotta figure out what these three events are gonna be and how he should prepare. Got it. And freaking Draco Malfoy's gonna drop out of a tree and make fun of him. Why is everyone up in trees? So they can drop out of them at the starts of conversations. But, so anyway, then this new teacher, Mad-Eye Moody, pops out and confronts Malfoy, turns him into a ferret. Why is he called Mad-Eye Moody? Well, one of his eyes is magic and zooms in like a camera lens and goes, v -v 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 Isn't it magic? Why is it making mechanical lens noises? Unclear. But anyway, at the end of the movie, there's gonna be a big reveal where Mad-Eye Moody was actually that Barty Crouch Jr. guy the whole time taking Polyjuice Pokemon. Ocean. Oh, very twisty. Extremely, sir. So for the first event, Harry's gotta steal an egg from a dragon. Oh boy. But this thing breaks loose from its chain and chases Harry around Hogwarts. Wow, so I guess the teachers must intervene, huh? A dragon is loose on school grounds. Now they just kinda watch. That checks out, actually. That seems on brand for them. And then once he gets the egg, he's gotta go listen to it underwater while a ghost tries to look at his wiener. What? So then eventually for the next competition, he's gotta go underwater for an extended period of time. Oh, how come? Well, cause see, the organ Organizers have kidnapped people that the champions care about. So like Ron and Hermione are there. There's the eight-year-old sister of one of them. Underwater. It tied up underwater. So Harry saves the life of Ron, but also of the eight-year-old girl since her big sister got eliminated. Oh, wow. So obviously Dumbledore gives him some extra points for bravery because he does that any chance he gets. Wait, so they just kidnapped some kids against their will and put them underwater and we're gonna let them drown if the champions fail the task. Yeah. That little girl would have drowned to death if Harry hadn't saved her. Yeah, because like... Like I said, they gotta know which young wizard is the best young wizard. So yeah, she would have drowned. This, man, I, wizards are not okay people, I think. Anyway, everybody in the stands goes nuts, obviously. What were they watching the whole time? Just the lake? Yeah, they were staring at a lake for an hour, so that's a fun activity to watch. Staring at lakes is tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the next event gonna be? They're all gonna stare at some hedges. Thrilling. Yeah, the final challenge is this giant hedge maze to find the Triwizard Cup, but it grabs you with its plantiness, so it's very scary. Man, Hogwarts 
Hogwarts just has the most violent vegetation. <laughs> it sure does, sir. So then Harry and Cedric grab the cup at the exact same time, but it was a port key and it teleports them to a graveyard. Spooky. Very spooky, sir. And then Wormtail's gonna pop out with a little baby Voldemort and kill Cedric. You know, I'm actually shocked it's taken four years for a kid to die. So it turns out Barty Crouch Jr. planned this whole thing because they needed a bit of Harry's blood to bring Voldemort back to life. He taught a class for a full year to get a couple of drops of blood. Yeah, and put his name in the Goblet of Fire and kind of laid out the path for him to be the one to touch the port key. That's, he could have just pricked him with a needle and then ran away. Yeah, but that'd make for a very, very quick movie. So he's going to go with this overly complicated plan that makes it more exciting. I guess. So anyway, then Voldemort gets a full body again. Uh-oh. Yeah, except for the nose. That doesn't grow in for some reason. Maybe he's a late bloomer. Maybe it'll grow in later. It won't. So now Voldemort wants to kill Harry. Oh man, it's going to be hard to survive an encounter with the Dark Lord. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because he gets some help from a couple of friendly ghosts. Oh. Do these ones try to look at his wiener? No, these ghosts are his parents' ghosts. And also Cedric is a ghost, and he's pretty chill about being dead. Our ghost back up. Yeah, and so then Harry's able to grab the port key and go back to the tournament. Well, good thing it was a two-way port key. It worked out pretty well, sir. So then everybody's in shock that Cedric is dead, and Harry takes off with Mad-Eye Moody. And does Harry figure out that it's not the real Mad-Eye Moody? He does. And then this guy recaps the entire school year for so long that Dumbledore and some teachers have time to bust in and help Harry. Oh, great. Yeah, and then coincidentally, at that very moment, his Polyjuice potion runs out. Fantastic dramatic potion timing. Definitely. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great Harry Potter movie, you know? Thank you. I just feel kind of bad for whatever actor's gonna play that Cedric Diggory character, you know? In all probability, that'll be the biggest role of his career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Goodness, what kind of release forms does that school have? I've been a social teacher. I can't take the kids across the street without a permission slip to go get some uh, ice cream. And these guys are drowning kids and kidnapping kids and dragons and monsters and it's just ridiculous. That's one thing I can't stand about the Harry Potter franchise. So thank you very much, Ryan George. And thank you for watching this pitch meeting with me. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight. Thank you for watching. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.